Okay, uh, this is video number 47, part B, or the second part. We started working with this circuit, and we wanted to determine the current flowing through the 4 ohm resistor. Now, in video number 46, we had solved this problem using the principle of superposition. Uh, what we did in part 1 of video number 47, we changed this circuit to its equivalent form right here. And now what we want to do is, once we have it in this form, is determine the current flowing through the 4 ohm resistor using nodal analysis. And in part 1 of this video, we had it down to this form right here, where we have from node 2, this equation that involves V1, V2, V3, where we have expressions now that involve um, V1 and V2 and V3 and V2. This came from node 1 and this came from node 3. So let's take a look at this right here. Here we have 3 times V3 minus 2 times V2 equals 36. Or from here, then I, we can quite easily derive V2 will equal 3 halves V3 minus 18. Put this over here and divide by 2. So we have this expression for V2 in terms of V3. Now let's look at this equation. Here we have 3 times V1 equals 16 plus V2. But we can substitute for V2 this expression. So what we have then is 3 times V1 will equal 16 plus V2, which is this. 3 halves V3 minus 18. So we have V1 equals 1 half times V3 minus 2 thirds. 16 minus 18 is negative 2. And then we go ahead and divide through by 3. 3 divided by 6 is 1 half. 2 divided by negative 2 divided by 3 minus 2 thirds. So we have this expression for V2 expressed in terms of V3 now, and we have an expression for V1 in terms of V3. So now we can go up to our equation here. We can express this in terms of V3. We can express this in terms of V3. Here we have V3, so we'll have a one equation that has simply one unknown, V3, and we can solve for V3. Once you know, we know what V3 is, we can determine V2 and we can determine V1. So let's write these two equations onto here, because we're going to need them. So we have V2 equals 3 halves V3 minus 18 and V1 equals 1 half V3 minus 2 thirds. Okay, and these we are going to put into this equation right here. So let's make some room. And let's see if we can get this taken care of then. So we have minus 6 times V1. This is V1 right here. V3 over 2 minus 2 thirds plus 34 times V2. 
Here's our expression for V2. 3 halves V3 minus 18. And here, minus 24 times V3 equals 0. OK, now we have one equation, and it involves one unknown, V3. So let's see what we have. 6 divided by 2, that's negative 6, so we have minus 3 V3. Here we have 2, negative 2 times negative 2, that's plus 4. That's 17 times 3, that should be 51 times V3. Minus 34 times 18. Um, going to the calculator. Looks like that's minus 612. Minus 24 times V3 equals 0. So we have 51 V3 minus 27 V3. That's plus 24 V3. And then we have 4 minus 612. That's minus 608 equals 0. Or just, we can just write it like this. So V3 equals 608 divided by 24. Uh, going to the calculator, I'm just going to round that off as 25 and 3 tenths. Okay, so finally we know what V3 is. We're interested in the current that goes across this resistor, so we have to know what are what is V2, what is V1. Well, oops, let's just now we're going to use this equation. We know what V3 is. We know what V3 is. We can very quickly determine V2 and V1. So let's do that. We have we have enough space here. V2 equals 3 halves times V3. That's 25.3 minus 18. And going to the calculator, we get that at 20 volts. And for V1, That's one half V3, so that's 25.3 divided by 2. Keep things in better focus here. Minus 2 thirds. And going to the calculator, and then minus 0.667, we're going to, that's very close to being 12. OK, now we have V2 is at 20 volts, V1 very close to 12 volts. So let's go to here. This is 20. This is 12. So the current is going to be 20 minus 12. That's 8 divided by 4 is 2 amps of current, and it's going to go in this direction. This is more positive than this is. So that's the same answer that we got in um, video number 46, where we started with the current in this form, and we use the principle of superposition. And we've determined 2 amps of current flowing in this direction. Here then, for this video, we use a source transformation. So this circuit 
change to this circuit, and then after that we used nodal analysis, and we got the same answer. Okay, um, that's it for this video. I hope that was helpful, again, doing an exercise, looking at a circuit, and seeing that there's two different approaches that we can use um, to uh, try to solve it. Okay, that's it for this. Um, come back, join us for the next video, and we'll see if we can solve some more problems.